On the stage of Silicon Valley, legendary companies and stories are continuing. AMD is one of the stars with twists and turns and ambitions. When it comes to AMD, people will immediately think of another chip giant, Intel. The relationship between the two is like Pepsi and Coca-Cola. Since its establishment around 1969, AMD and Intel have been competing with each other in the same runway, but the AMD has always been in the second place. When Intel was in full swing, AMD was on the verge of bankruptcy. The joining of Lisa Su, a Taiwanese-American engineer, has finally completely overturned the competition that has lasted for more than 50 years. In February 2022, the market value of AMD surpassed that of Intel for the first time in history, shocking the whole industry. From moribund to rebirth, how exactly did AMD do it? What did it do right? As an outsider CEO, how did Lisa Su reverse the restrictive beliefs of AMD and even the entire industry, and lead the company to break the curse of success? Hi. Welcome to Tech Teller, and let's move on to today's topic. First, let's do an experiment together. If you go back in time to 2012, you have an opportunity to buy a company's stock, and there are two companies in front of you. Among them, Company A looks very miserable and its main business market share is less than 15%, funds are tight, the headquarters building is sold, the strategy is unclear, and four CEOs have been changed in four years. Company B is just the opposite, occupying a high margin market with a market share of over 90%, abundant cash and rapid revenue growth, monopolizing the market with stable management. What choice will you make? If you successfully purchased the shares of Company B in 2012, you can get about eight times the stock yield until the end of 2021, which is very impressive. But if you choose Company A, the result will be even more astonishing. After 10 years, you will end up with a stock return of about 100 times. Well, Company B is named Intel, and Company A is AMD, the protagonist we are going to analyze today. In 2007, Apple's first-generation iPhone, which was born out of nowhere, used a chip developed by Jobs himself. Why is this happening? In fact, Apple once approached Intel and AMD to jointly develop and produce mobile chips, but both of them believed that the mobile internet chip market was too small to be worth developing products for, and rejected Apple's request. The pace of the two companies is surprisingly consistent, completely ignoring the arrival of a big era. Normally, even if large companies ignore the changing trends of the external market, they still have the strength to catch up. But the actual situation is that even if the two companies try their best to catch up and try to increase investment in the mobile, internet market, they still fail in the end. In 2009, AMD, which was in deep financial crisis, even sold its mobile handset business unit to Qualcomm, another emerging giant in the industry. At the same time, in the semiconductor industry, there is a famous Moore's law. The core content is, when the price remains unchanged, the number of components that can be accommodated on an integrated circuit will double approximately every 18 to 24 months. Performance will also be doubled. This law reveals the speed at which information technology advances. This is Moore's law on the supply side. From the demand side, Moore's law means that every 18 to 24 months, the same money can buy double the computing power. Moore's law actually controls both sides of supply and demand. It makes AMD and Intel form a closed system. Enterprises don't care about changes in the outside world, as long as they manufacture according to Moore's law. The entire industrial chain will follow the production rhythm of the enterprise, so as to achieve the purpose of controlling the market. For nearly 50 years before the advent of the mobile internet era, these two companies have almost always done this, and succeeded. But this also brought them the curse of success. A successful position creates a closed system that gradually fails to keep up with the speed of market changes. However, the market has no latecomers. Defying the market will eventually be taught a hard lesson by the market. Because of the misjudgment of market demand, AMD and Intel have reached a turning point together. But the choices and situations of the two are completely different. 
due to its early deployment of the enterprise-level data center market and its strong strength. Intel still occupies the lucrative high-end data center market, with a market share as high as 99%. AMD was not that lucky. It spent $5.4 billion to acquire ATI in 2006. This acquisition caused AMD to carry a serious financial burden. Until the outbreak of the global financial crisis in 2008, AMD began to sell off the fab and headquarters building. And a giant of the age went to the verge of bankruptcy for a while. When a company is on the verge of bankruptcy or reaches a strategic turning point, one of the things it will definitely do is to change people and leaders. Both AMD and Intel chose to replace their CEOs around 2013. From 2014 to 2022, the CEO of AMD has been held by Chinese-American Lisa Su. She also served as the chairman of the board of directors in 2022. Lead AMD to an unlimited future. So, who is Lisa Su? Why did she take the helm of AMD and win the turnaround? Lisa Su, who combines the three labels of super academic master, technology geek, and outstanding leader, is praised by everyone as the female version of Iron Man. She is a well-deserved super straighter student. She was admitted to MIT early at the age of 17, received a PhD in electrical engineering from MIT at the age of 24, and won the MIT Outstanding Technology Innovator Award at the age of 32. Moreover, she is also one of the 2021 Fortune 100 Most Influential Women, the 2021 Five Most Respected Women Leaders in Technology and Innovation, the 2021 Yale School of Management Legendary Leader Award, and the 2019 Barron's Magazine Global Best Chief Executive Executive. Due to the existence of Moore's Law that controls both sides of supply and demand, the closed system caused a series of industry problems. On the supply side, Moore's law slowed down and the rhythm of the industrial chain was disrupted. On the demand side, product performance improved, exceeding user needs. In other words, performance is oversupplied. Many entrepreneurs and even the leaders of mature companies believe in one sentence, it is what Henry Ford, the founder of Ford Motor, said, if I had asked my customers what they wanted they would have said a faster horse. That is to say, if the manufacturer asks the customer what car he wants, the customer will only tell you that he needs a faster wagon. He never knew he needed a car. Therefore, we don't have to care about what customers think and want, as long as we do a good job in product production. However, do customers really not know what they want? Well, maybe customers don't know what products they need, and of course, they don't know whether they will need something they haven't seen. But from a deep understanding, customers always know what they need, but they just don't know what the product he needs will be concretized at the current stage. What customers want is to reach their destination faster, safer, and cheaper, and horse-drawn carriages, trains, and airplanes are just means of realization. So, how does Lisa Su perceive changes in customer needs in a timely manner? The senior management team in China once pointed out, Lisa Su will use Google Translate to browse user reviews of AMD products on domestic e-commerce platforms in China, find out user needs and pain points, and then return to the next step of product development and strategy formulation. In addition, when Lisa Su visits clients, she never sticks to identity equality, but starts from the business perspective of real problem solving. She often communicates directly with the business unit leaders to really get things down to the ground. The reason for doing this, she said, I want customers and partners to feel that we value them. They can feel how we treat customers and whether we put their demands at the top of priority. This will also reflect to follow-up cooperation. She also said, when thinking about a product, it is necessary to build a blueprint for the next five years. It seems to be a correct nonsense, but what is the real meaning of this sentence? Well, the difficulty lies in that what you consider is not what you can do, but what the customer really needs. In other words, it is to think backwards from the demand side and seize the next opportunity. In Lisa Su's view, it is necessary to understand the changes in the entire market, and understand the real needs of customers from every conversation with customers. 
break the supply side thinking and let customers become the driving force for innovation. Therefore, Lisa Su redefined AMD's mission. Before 2015, AMD's mission is to provide customized high tech solutions with leading design and integration technology so that users can feel the charm of technological innovation and create infinite possibilities. From 2015 to today, creating great products that can accelerate the next generation computing experience has become its latest mission. Lisa Su transformed the original corporate belief from product function leadership to use value leadership, and deduced the final product and core technology from use value, thus breaking AMD's limiting beliefs and breaking the winner's curse. Around 2010, the industry saw a promising market. That is, by 2020 there will be 50 billion connected devices, which is a huge market. The vast majority of chip companies have followed the market trend and made the same strategic choice, that is, to design chips that are available on more platforms. Because the consensus in the industry at that time was that as the number of devices increased, the number of devices using chips would also increase accordingly. Enterprises could seize this wave of market dividends as long as they manufactured the chips used in the platform. So, how did Lisa Su do it? From AMD's public financial report in 2015, we can find after interpretation that Lisa Su found a key signal from this information. The interconnection of devices will definitely generate a large amount of data. Therefore, AMD further clarified what to do and how to do it. They chose not to provide more types of terminal chips, but to focus on computing platforms. Under the leadership of Lisa Su, AMD abandoned many product lines and redeployed its strategy around the single element of data. But from equipment to data to computing platforms, this is already a well-known market. Rival Intel has already laid out in the field of, since this is a market that everyone is targeting, give up and choose another way out, or join their war. This became Lisa Su's main thinking question. AMD, which emphasizes the leading use value, must start thinking about how to create more future use value for customers five years later in product development. Based on this, building a high-performance computing platform is an inevitable choice. After determining the direction of development, Lisa Su chose to lead AMD on a unique path of innovation. They have invested a lot of energy and resources to develop the Zen architecture, which is the top-level design of the high-performance computing platform. Just like building a house requires design drawings, the Zen architecture is equivalent to this drawing. In the early stage of architecture research and development, AMD encountered the darkest moment. Some media described it as being in a dying situation. In 2011, 10% of employees were cut. In 2012, 25% of employees were cut, and in 2014, 7% of employees were cut, totaling nearly one-third of employees. From 2012 to 2014, it lost nearly 1 billion US dollars in a row. The research and development cycle of the Zen architecture is about five years, and the research and development investment is about 5 billion US dollars, which is equivalent to Lisa Su betting everything on AMD. Clausewitz pointed out in On War that if the mind is to emerge unscathed from this relentless struggle with the unforeseen, two qualities are indispensable, first, an intellect that, even in the darkest hour, retains some glimmerings of the inner light which leads to truth, and second, the courage to follow this faint light wherever it may lead. For AMD at that time, Lisa Su was such a person with insight and courageous. Under the leadership of Lisa Su and AMD, the entire industry chain carried out combined innovation, breaking through the technological limit. AMD is responsible for the design, TSMC is responsible for the manufacturing, and the two companies have worked closely together to achieve a breakthrough. They launched two new series of products, Risen and EPYC, which truly surpassed the limitations of Moore's law and broke the technological evolution path of the entire industry. Under the leadership of Lisa Su, AMD realized strategic adjustments and seized a lot of market share that originally belonged to Intel. Of course, Intel will not remain indifferent. In 2021, Intel also changed its CEO. After the arrival of the new CEO Henry Kissinger, he made a lot of adjustments to Intel, and overtook AMD in many fields in the following year. 
the competition between the two giants is still going on fiercely. Compared to Lisa Sue's firm belief that Moore's law will eventually fail, Henry Kissinger puts forward the opposite view. He believes that Moore's law is still in force. In short, Intel now insists on product performance leadership and is committed to building a delivery platform. AMD, on the other hand, insists on leading in use value and is committed to building a computing platform. Since 2008, the core capabilities of AMD and Intel have not changed. Why, among the many CEOs, only Lisa Su and Henry Kissinger can succeed and bring the company back to life? After research, we found that the two co-founders of Intel, Robert Noyce and Gordon Moore, were both scientists and engineers, known as the fathers of Silicon Valley. Therefore, from the day Intel was born, they have injected the gene of focusing on technology research and development and insisting on leading product performance. The founder of AMD, Jerry Sanders, nicknamed Silicon Valley Ranger, was born as a sales manager, and his strength lies in marketing. Therefore, the turning point strategic choices of AMD and Intel may just be the return of the entire enterprise to its original intention. Looking back at the famous turning moments in modern business history, Louis Gerstner led IBM to turn around, focusing on serving customers, which is a return to the IBM spirit proposed by the founder. Satya Nadella led Microsoft to turn around and promote the popularization of computing technology, which is also a return to Microsoft's mission. What Lisa Su did, perhaps, was to bring AMD back to the original intention of the company, thus rejuvenating the company. For enterprises, one thing needs to be kept in mind at all times, not forgetting the original intention, starting from the heart, and thinking about why the enterprise exists from the original intention. Well, thanks for your listening. Please put your comments below, and share your insightful ideas with other people. I am Tech Teller, the person to tell you the news that worth spreading and the opinions that worth thinking every day. Goodbye.